Dying in Minecraft sucks. Okay, so where? Oh, go! Oh, no, 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 no! No! What is. Seriously, I'm dead. I'm dead. Come on. No, no, the snowballs. The snowballs. Oh, there's a creeper to the right. Am I dead? Am I dead? Oh, no. Why did I just do that? Death is oh, no. Oh, no. I However, avoiding death in Minecraft is a hard thing to do, especially on the harder difficulties, because there are some sources of death that are really hard to avoid. I mean, sure, when you punch a llama by accident, it's unlikely to kill you. It does a little bit of spit damage, but it's very easy to take down or just ignore. But if you punch a villager on accident, then boy, have you got hell coming for you, because one fake punch on a villager or one accidental misclick is going to cause a horde of iron zombies to converge on your position. And when the iron golems do get to you, they have a lot of pain they can inflict on you all at one time. So how do you avoid these sorts of deaths in Minecraft? I wanted to go through 13 of the most common deaths and talk about how you can avoid them, starting with the Iron Golem. Because this seems like such an unjustified thing to me. I accidentally hit a villager, but it was really the villager's fault. Why am I suffering for this one? And it seems super dumb uh, that you can die so fast this way. And that's why I wanted to give you the first tip, which is, hey, how do you avoid Iron Golem hits if you really have to? Well, just go inside. Funnily enough, even though Iron Golems are built to protect villagers, they actually are not not able to hit you while you're behind a doorway because iron golems are much bigger than the one by one which they require to uh, actually hit you. So as you can see, the iron golem wants to get me, but he just can't because I'm inside and that's real nice. So as long as you stay at least one block away from the walls in a place because iron golems and their hitboxes don't line up with reality, you can be pretty safe and pretty assured of no death. And if you go a little higher up, then you're even safer. This height advantage is actually how you can take the Iron Golem survival into an Iron Golem kill because if an Iron Golem attacks you and it's a village you don't really care about, like if it's your own village, you want to keep that Iron Golem around, but if it's not, then... <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to avoid this. That's the point of the video. But the ultimate question here is how do you avoid it? And there is a few ways, but the safest way sounds kind of stupid on the surface, but it really is an easy one to avoid if you want to. All you're going to do to avoid Iron Golem retaliation on mass and the death that comes with it is just dig yourself a little hole in the ground, make sure it's at least three blocks deep, and then the Iron Golem will come down here trying to kill you, except the Iron Golem can't fit in a one by one hole, which means you can attack the Iron Golem for free for as long as you like, and then the Iron Golem will die, which is great not only because it stops you being aggroed against by a super powerful mob, but also because you get yourself four, it's actually three to five, um, bits of iron ingots, which are a nice little trade-off, meaning that if you go to a village that you don't intend to actually trade with or actually keep safe in any way, then going in there, killing the iron golems, is actually a good bet. That's right, this advice is not only one that helps you avoid dying, but also gets you some nice iron ingots along the way. Speaking of things that might get you some iron, digging in Minecraft is a great way to find ores as well as any other buried structures, but digging straight down, as we all know, can be dangerous in Minecraft. I think the risk of falling into lava is a little bit overstated. In reality, you just might fall into a cave where you're unprepared, you might take a lot of fall damage, and it's a really bad idea. However, doing a mine like this is super inefficient because it takes like three blocks down, uh, you know, three blocks to the right, I should say, for every block down. It's a, uh, you know, less efficient way to mine if you want to do it. So what's the most efficient way to dig down and avoid the while doing so, stand in the middle of two blocks. In Minecraft, you can effectively be standing on two blocks at once, which means that you can remove either block and still be standing. Here's me in the same position this time, mining that block, and what do you know I'm fine? I'll place a block back down there and I'll mine this one, and I'm still fine, because as long as either one of these two blocks is here, you are okay, which means you can afford to mine one block at a time, as you can see, and still mine down super fast, finding iron, finding coal, finding anything you like, even lava, without falling directly into it. How do you avoid the death, the, the, the painful bit? of digging straight down, all you've got to do is make sure your hole is slightly wider. As I say, you know, a wider hole might be less appealing to look at when you see it up from the top, but the truth is it's going to keep you a lot safer in Minecraft for when you run into situations like this where I might have fallen straight through to the ground, only three blocks, but it could be much worse, and that is how you get into strongholds and other below ground structures super easily. So dying to silverfish is something that never happens to anyone, right? Um, come on, no, not again, not again! Twice! But just in case you have some issues with them, I feel we should point out how do you avoid silverfish becoming a real pain? Because a single silverfish is not actually a very threatening mob. The way more threatening thing is the silverfish horde. So how do you prevent that? The first way is to prevent silverfish spawning in the first place. Outside of the silverfish spawner in the end portal room, the only place silverfish can spawn is found around the stronghold in silverfish infested blocks. You can tell which blocks are infested because if you try to break them with your fist, it will take a lot, uh, you know, it will take less time to mine the silverfish infested blocks than their nearby counterparts. Because it's 
not really a stone brick, it's a infested block and therefore it breaks easier. And the other way you can tell is when you use a, a diamond pickaxe or any pickaxe that fact, you can mine uh, stone blocks super easily, but it takes a longer time to mine the infested one. Here's a normal block, here's the infested one. As you can see, there's a time difference, which means that when we mine this with our fist or the pickaxe, a silverfish will spawn. Once a silverfish spawns, if you only have an iron sword or below, it's important that you never attack the silverfish head on with a non-critical hit. If you deal less than the entire health of the silfish's, uh, you know, uh, body in one damage, the silfish will call friends for backups, and as we all know, starting an unfair fight is the easiest way to win any fight in the world. Pro tip, people like to be like, honor's so important. Nah, numbers is what's important. Two weak dudes can fight up one strong dude, and that's why 100 silfish can take down even the most battle-ready player if you're not prepared for them. So what you've got to do is you've got to make sure you get a critical just like that. If the silfish dies in one hit, he cannot call his friends. And believe me when I say you do not want a silfish calling its friends. Let me show you right here in just the most simple example how like, okay, silfish has chased me through a stronghold. I'm trying to punch it back every time. In reality, every punch I'm doing is weakening that one silfish. But by doing it, I'm spawning in way more silfish from the rest of the stronghold. And you start to appreciate just how many silfish there really is in this place. So yeah, what you want to do is you want to kill it entirely in one hit. If that's a dangerous thing, or if you've got lots of them already, and you can't one by one critical hit all of these monsters, which is a very real possibility ability, right? Then what you want to do instead is you want to make sure you light them all on fire because if they die to sources that aren't directly you, then when they die, they do not, uh, you know, send the call out for help. And as a result, they all die <laughs> jumping around, uh, you know, in pain, in fire. It's awful, of course, for the silfish, but it's great for you because you can finally fix your problem. And just like that, our silfish bit problem is gone. So yeah, like with all insect related problems, including finding a spider in your house, the best thing to do is just to set it all on fire and hope for the best because you know what? What's the worst that can happen? So the next most common death in Minecraft is usually the creeper. And my pro tip for the creeper is play with sounds on. And when you hear an explosion, be ready to place a block between you and that creeper. Even if it's slightly to the side, the way explosions work in Minecraft is you just need to have as much distance between you and its explosion and blocks help to add to that distance um, as possible and you can avoid its damage. All I have on me right now is some gold boots and a leather chest plate. And despite that fact, as you can see, I survived with just a half heart of damage. The pro tip you might find easier than that one though is one that happens whenever a creeper comes across you It's the best way to avoid the explosion hurting you is to run straight through it Just like this if you sprint straight through the creeper by the time you get to the other side The creeper will explode and you'll be 100% outside its blast radius This one admittedly is a very scary thing to do if you get hit by a mob You're gonna be back in the explosion zone But the easiest way to get rid of creepers the easiest way to take them down is to let them kill themselves by sprinting Perfectly through them not around them not you know like at the edge of their radius not waiting for them to blow up but instead to sprint through them or if you're absolutely terrified of that at the very least stand the closest you can to them while uh, You know facing them and then you'll be able to avoid the explosion or at least it'll only deal a half half damage to you This is what I do in all of my survival worlds I just let the creeper explode because more often than not There's a bunch of mobs around it anyway that you can deal with by just letting it explode I mean if you imagine this room being filled with enemies or if we just find one that is actually Okay, so there's this absolutely terrifying spider right here, right? Except, no, not terrifying anymore. The creeper's got it covered. Creepers are actually quite tactical to help you kill other mobs. And on harder difficulties, it's a uh, dangerous game to play. Um, but it is one of the easiest ways to deal with a huge horde of mobs. Sometimes you get unlucky though, and there's no creepers around when you do come across a horde of mobs that you know are just going to take you out. And you can't always rely on them to attack each other like some of them are doing right here. Sometimes you're just going to get wrecked. What do you do in these situations? Most of the time, honestly, it's panic, right? But the best thing you should be doing is finding a corner, blocking yourself up inside of it, and making sure that no mobs can get to you or see you, and you can even light it up if you want to make it nice in here, because if the mobs can't physically touch you, except in this case apparently, they usually are not able to hurt you, except, you know, mobs don't follow the rules today. But yeah, all you have to do is get away from them physically, and then most of them at the very least can't touch you, with the exception of some zombies pushing through a block. But as you can see, we're now safe behind a wall, we can't be hurt by the huge horde of mobs, and we can wait for them to despawn, or if I still need to go to the place where they were desperately right now we can just kind of cut through the cave and we should still end up in exactly the same place as we were before and I'm, I'm hoping at least you know what? let's hope that the same cave with that little waterfall is just through here um and that indeed 
Uh, we actually do find it. There we go. Look at this. All the mobs are now hiding around my little block. Besides these two guys, except it's very easy to avoid or to run away from these people and keep on going where we want to. You know, actually, yeah, let's just take them down. This this can't be too bad of an idea, right? They've even hurt each other a little bit. So easy stuff, easy done. And now the ones around here are dispersed and they're much easier to kill. It's not much of a mob. It's much easier to take down. No panicking required. No death. And indeed, next to no damage besides that weird zombie bug where they can hit through walls. Easy stuff. And it's a way to, you know, again, blocking yourself up buys you time to make a rational decision as opposed to a panic one. Because when you panic, you make bad decisions. Doesn't take a genius to know that, right? Something that also doesn't take a genius to work out is the fact that jack-o'-lanterns are the easiest way to avoid looking at endermen in Minecraft. If you look at an enderman normally, they get very angry and they want to hurt you, right? This is a fact about Minecraft. A very annoying fact if you're in the end, uh, especially on the harder difficulties without any armor, because you can die from just a few badly placed enderman hits, or rather well placed enderman hits, depending on your perspective, I guess. Um, basically, you can die super easily to endermen, and if you look at multiple one of these guys, it's easy to die. So you use a jack-o'-lantern, right? And you're like, aha! I'm real smart with my carved pumpkin on my head. Now I can look at the enemy all I like and they won't aggro on me. However, Obviously, this is a huge downside because it allows you to avoid the death by Enderman that is so often a plague on the end run. But otherwise, it's just this awful thing that takes up more than 60% of my field of view. Plus, the most important one, where my sword actually is, I have to just guess what I'm hitting, which is a terrible way to play Minecraft. And uh, yeah, you might be able to put up with it for a little bit, but it's going to be very claustrophobic, very annoying. And it's also going to block out important things in your vision that might also save your life. So what is the better solution to death by Enderman than using a carved pumpkin, which, you know, you might not even have with you at the time. Well, my favorite solution is actually just using a little bit of height to your advantage. Again, kind of like the way the carved, uh, you know, kind of like the way the iron golems work. If you look at an enderman just wrong and you don't like it, all you've got to do is stack yourself up three blocks and enderman will not be able to hit you. In fact, even two blocks will usually be just about fine if they can't jump at you. And you can attack them from here if you want to, or you can just not. You can just stay on your three block pillar. And as long as you keep bridging along like three blocks away, you should be entirely fine and immune from most stuff. And given that in the end, that brings us pretty conveniently onto our next point though, because we just died to end acid. End acid, we didn't see coming. It just hit us and we were obliterated. And uh, obviously, you know, like end acid is being slowly fixed and tweaked. So it's not an instant death sentence, but you know, even in the cases where it's not, it's still super deadly and it can be the thing that finishes you. How do you avoid end acid? And the similar to this one sounds so stupid, but it's something you've got to do in the end at as much of the time as you can. You need to look directly at the ender dragon. While you're looking at the ender dragon, you're pretty safe from everything besides direct physical attacks, which you can obviously still uh, ward off using a physical thing like this. As you can see, I got I got a little bit of damage dealt to me, but I'm mostly fine from the most damaging of the attacks, the end breath and the end acid. As you can see, I can avoid nice and easily. So all you want to do to avoid death by end acid is stare at the dragon all the time. Again, seems super stupid, but just like uh, you know in real life, guns can't hurt you if you look them directly in the eye. Uh, and all you've got to do to avoid the same with the ender dragon is stare them dead on in the face. Things can only hurt you when you're not looking. It's true for many real world deaths actually. Fire can't hurt you if you look at it. The trick with fire is to stare it dead on in the eye. Same for heart disease. If you just look straight at the heart disease, it won't hurt you anymore. And uh, yeah, the vast majority of deaths could be avoided by looking at them. And this includes the ender dragon. I should probably clarify that's a joke. There's going to be some person being like, ah, uneducated Brits don't know about guns. But you know what? I do know about guns. And I know you got to look them in the eye. Because, you know, they respect your dominance if you stare at them. Pretty sure that's guns and not, not cheetahs. Pretty sure. Speaking of cheetahs, something that you'll notice if you're not one of them is that if you are here in the end, the third most common death after Enderman and the Ender Dragon, the two most deadly things, are the fact that there is a big void down there. A void which you can fall into... Wait, you're not. My end is bugged. But there is a big void down there, a void which will instantly kill you if you land in it and disintegrate all of your items. So the most, uh, you know, avoid worthy death in Minecraft, in my opinion, has to be, like the only one I can really recommend above all else, is make sure you avoid falling off the end. How do you avoid this? Well, you can bring an Elytra with you, but if you don't have one of those yet, the second best solution is always to have an Ender Pearl ready and willing to fire. The second you suspect you're falling, fire one of these. Just to show you how this works, I'm going to fall off the edge right here. I'm going to fire the ender pearl, and as you're going to see, it's going to save my life. This is what you need to be willing to do at all times in the end. Seriously, if you spend a lot of time here, you need to make sure that you have ender pearls on your hotbar at all times, so that if you fall off, you can be like, oh no, I changed my mind, and you can fire the pearl, and you can pray that it hits just in time, so you can pull off a nice save like that. By the way, what a weird end 
generation assist right here. But yeah, you need to be able to save yourself at any given point in time. Even if you have at best the 50-50 success rate because you fire too high, it's still something worth doing. And if it is something that happens more than once to you, or if you're horrified for happening at all, just be prepared and learn how to do this. You can do it in creative if you want to. All you gotta do is prepare and know where to fire your enderpearls. You wanna fire as low as possible while still firing as high up to make sure that actually hits something. So again, just to show you how this works, up there should work just fine, just great. And it will save my life from an impending fall. When the dragon comes towards you and you're worried of falling off the edge, have an Elytra or have Ender Pearls or, you know, have a nice, uh, you know, message ready to tell your family about why you died this way. So yeah, pro tip with Toy Cat. Speaking of Elytras though, if you want to get yourself one of these pair of wings that sometimes people say Elytra to, but you know, those people are wrong. Just like people who don't think that you can avoid a gun by looking it dead in the eyes. So um, basically, what you got to do if you want to get an Elytra is you want to go into one of these end cities. Except the end cities are filled with these shulkers. And one of the most common painful deaths because of how far it is away from your home. Because you can't have a home here in the end, of course. Is when shulkers hit you. Which, you know, shulkers do very little damage. You're like, haha, you think you can kill me? I've got food. It's all fine. But then you float up to the sky. And then the full damage on the way down is what kills you. So how do you avoid a uh, shulker death? Make sure you stay underneath something relatively low to the ground if it, you know better even better you can bring some blocks of you and be ready to fall on those blocks if you can and you can reduce your fall damage if you really can't do either of those things and you're worried and you're going upwards and you can't see something to cling on to uh, the best thing to do in these cases is just to be like okay something's gonna hit me i don't know what uh place some block on the way down to reduce the fall damage to the minimum amount you can and you can re you can actually have zero fall damage if you're doing this if you're going up along the side of something you can still save your fall on the way down rather than saving it on the way up so as long as you're not floating in the middle of the void in which case you're dead if you don't have a lecture or some form of way to cancel the full damage, uh, then that's a thing. However, just let's suppose that you get hit by shulkers, you panic, you're in the middle of nowhere, or in any other dimension, you have full damage that you have to take and you want to avoid it. Or if you just knocked off something, you're about to die, how do you avoid it? Well, this is something you have to kind of prepare for, but it will save your life to bring hay bales with you to every dimension. The reason you'll see these used in so many speedruns of myself and others is because hay bales can reduce full damage by an absurd amount. It's meant to be about 70% on the uh, Java version, but on Bedrock, you're going to see how it's significantly lower than that as long as this Enderman doesn't get me. You know, I'm probably gonna dice the Enderman, but if you can just place one of these just before you fall, which, okay, <laughs> it's gonna be a long time till I fall, it seems. So I'm floating over the nothingness, or I've just got hit by a creeper, or something has knocked me off, I don't know what to do. What you wanna do is face directly down at the ground, and you wanna spam place this, and then, again, that entire fall that should have killed me multiple times over has now saved my life, and I've only done uh, what is that, a third of my health bar? Super easy, super great. You can fall from hundreds of blocks. It's silly that you can fall from 100 blocks, but you can. Uh, and you can survive using a hay bale. And I love that that's a thing. It's ridiculous, but it totally is a thing regardless. So yeah, uh, how do you avoid shulkers? Kill them. But if you can't kill them or you get hit on the way, uh, just know that as long as there's a ceiling above you, you'll be fine. And if there's not a ceiling, use something along the side just like this. And if you don't have either of those, Bring some hay bales, you know, just just, just saying. Okay, so another depressingly common Minecraft death is people who are swimming down at the bottom of the ocean when all of a sudden they realize that, oh no, things are going really bad for themselves. And uh, yeah, this is when usually you realize you can't get to the surface in time. So my best pro tip is to make yourself a little box, something like this, place a sand block at the very top of that, and then use that as a way to regenerate. This is a super nice way to avoid death by drowning. And as you can see, it just about worked for us, even though we started building it after we were drowning, because the fundamentals are quite simple. You just want to make a box and all sides, have a ceiling in it, and then use a gravity effective block so you can replace a block and then you can use it to make an air source. Post uh, the aquatic update, making air sources underwater is really hard. Some people still think you can do it using just a door. These people often tend to die in pretty gruesome ways. Um, but yeah, in reality, if you want to make a water source, uh, if you want to make an air bubble, you have to be very careful about how you choose to do so. And this is the best strategy we have so far. So yeah, and now, we've <laughs> now we're trapped inside a box and we uh, can just about uh, survive this one. Because you also be careful about how you let yourself out of these things. Keep the air bubble safe at all costs is my uh, pro tip with these ones. Because it's very easy for the air bubble to kind of falter, as indeed it has right here. I've even used this technique to save myself while fighting the Elder Guardian because this is an entirely underwater fight, but you can make an air pocket and all you need to do is make sure that one bit of water is entirely protected on all sides and then place a piece of sand or even gravel if you want to and you'll be fine. Speaking of Elder Guardians, by the way, one of the mistakes that I often see people make when they're raiding the Ocean Monument and one of the common deaths that comes as a result is Guardian deaths. Guardians have laser beams that come from their eyes and those laser beams can kill you very quickly because they do do damage even uh, through your armor. It's kind of ridiculous. By the way, how did a wandering trader spawn out here? 
whatever. You know, just like the Wandering Trader, though, my advice for the Guardians is just to ignore them. It seems like a dumb thing, like, wait, there's this deadly mob that can kill you, they swim in giant packs, and your advice is to ignore them, so you can't. Yep, that's precisely my advice. The thing you want to uh, keep in mind about Guardians is they spawn in mass, and when they start attacking you, it can be real deadly, but the trick is, until that point, you're actually pretty safe, honestly. Also, same, uh, you know, water technique right here, save myself from drowning. But yeah, honestly, when it comes to uh, these Guardians and their super deadly laser beams, the best defense is when they start attacking you, build a wall between you and them, or just get behind an existing one, and uh, otherwise, what you want to do, besides staying uh, fully breathed up, by the way, oxygen is good for you real life and Minecraft. But yeah, uh, the honestly easiest thing to do is just to ignore them, run right past them, or go into a different room to them, because even when they are directly aggroing against you, it's easy to reset their attacks by placing a single block between you and them. Even in the big rooms like this one right here, you can use that precise advice and it should just about work. Also, look, another oxygen bubble. So yeah, here's a uh, guardian trying to attack me right now, for instance. All we gotta do is we gotta place a big wall between me and it, and then the attack is stopped. It's the most counterintuitive thing in this video so far, but right now, the way the AI works for these mobs, the best thing to do is a single block or to ignore them. So, just like in real life, the best thing to do with things you don't like is to block them. Anyway though, while we're talking about niche things that people ignore, let's talk about the Elytra and one of the common deaths that you see, which is people taking too much kinetic damage because they're trying to land somewhere and they go into it head first. Just like this, taking a bunch of damage and dying in a awful way. How do you avoid that sort of death? Well, the easiest way is to not go that fast in the first place, to try and like lower off your speed as you get close to the thing. You can easily do this by zigging left and right, up and down, whatever it takes. The more movements you take, the easier you can avoid a fall. But given that that's way less fun and you're going fast for a reason, you're not going fast to try and endanger yourself. You're going fast because it's fun. Here's the easiest way to kill speed very quickly when it comes to going fast. So you're going super fast at something. The best thing to do is to use that speed, turn into height, let go of the Elytra and then re go into it, which you can do by pressing A. You can press the fly button and you can un-elytra and then you can re-elytra up in the same jump in the air. It's kind of wacky that it works that way, but as you can see, I elytra'd, I un and then I elytra'd again, and that way allowed me to lose height very, very rapidly, which again, I mean, you can lose height the slow way by just like circling around. Let me show you right here. Here's me going downwards, and if I want to lose height without going too slow, we just spin in a circle. That works too. But the more fun way is to let go of the elytra. It's kind of fun to suspend yourself in midair just like this. We're falling and then we're not falling and we're just about to survive. Again, that is a tricky thing to pull off. But if you're in a need for speed mode, then you need to heed this advice. So the next most common death is probably while fighting the wither because the wither is a pretty hard boss just for the explosion damage alone. But it also does this withering effect which lasts for 7 seconds, up to 30 on hard difficulty by the way, um, which can be a devastating life runner unless you have milk. Milk will remove all effects in Minecraft, even witch effects, even the most uh, deadly poison effects from friends. And the easiest way to get rid of it is milk, which means if you want to fight the wither and you want to avoid dying of withering, just bring a cow, put it in a boat so it stays in one place, and then obviously you also want to keep it safe uh, from the wither because the wither will be firing at it if it's nearby so yeah drink your milk get rid of that effect and then you can go straight back to attacking the wither head on if you really want to just make sure you always have multiple buckets or you die as a result and so will the cow if the wither gets too close Either way though, I hope you all enjoyed this video. One of my favorite things to do on this channel is to help people realize that Minecraft seems super challenging in certain places and people avoid certain behaviors, certain parts of Minecraft because they're just so terrified of it. Uh, but the truth is pretty much every horrifying, terrifying death is avoidable in some way. And I hope that this video helps you to realize that indeed that is the fact. And if it didn't, then maybe it just taught you some cool little tips about Minecraft that can help you out in the future. That's all I really aim to do on this channel and I hope it did precisely that. And if it didn't, then I hope you choose to subscribe anyway because maybe the next video will because you know what we upload every single day on this channel giving you tips and tricks to help you out with your minecraft world and indeed your life or something in between those two usually anyway thank you for watching hope you all enjoyed it because i'll see you all next time goodbye